Hi, I'm Stephanie Robinson, and I'm one of the co-authors of The Secret Files of Faraday Morrow and Faraday Morrow and the Talking Library. And I'm going to talk to you today on behalf of myself and my co-author and let you know about the process of writing books and stories and publishing your work traditionally or following your own indie path. So let me start off by telling you about my co-author, Jessica Haight. Jess likes to be a writer and artist. Animals, rocks, and books are her jam. She was probably the town lamplighter in a past life, either that or a crow. She loves sparkly things and things that are lit up. Both sound fine to her. Jess lives in Connecticut with her family. And to learn more about Jessica's artwork, you can visit cottage5.com. Here's a picture of Jess in her outdoor writing and drawing area. Here's a recent art piece by Jessica that goes with her Rainbow Ride series. And here are some drawings. If you go to cottage5.com, you can find out more about her meditative drawing, microscopic modern art, divine nature photography. You can go through and see all different types of art and writing resources and materials that Jessica has there. <clears throat> this is about me. I'm Stephanie Robinson. I live in Connecticut also. I taught fifth grade for about 15 years, and now I'm a school media specialist. And I absolutely love my job because I love to get to learn new things every day. So researching and finding out facts and information really makes me happy and excited. And when I'm not working, I like to spend my time creating stories, getting lost in books, and traveling to new places. So a little bit about my education and educational background. I graduated from Pomp Rock High School. Then I got a Bachelor of Science in Elementary Education from Southern Connecticut State University and a Bachelor of Science in Recreation and Leisure. Later on, I went on to get a Master of Library Science. And as I mentioned, I was a fifth grade teacher at MES and now I'm a school library media specialist. A little bit about Jessica's background. Jess also graduated from Pomperog High School. She also attended Southern Connecticut State University. She went for a year and majored in journalism. She currently works as an administrative manager and registrar for Enchanted Garden Studios, which is a school of the arts. She's had lots of positions while she's practiced the craft of writing. They've all been good for the experience and, of course, paying the bills. And here are a few interesting jobs she's had that she wanted to share. A stable ha hand at an equestrian farm, a bartender, a server, a real estate agent, and a printer's assistant. Every job helps you on your path to being a writer. <laughs> and how did our path meet? How did we meet? Um, Jessica and I met freshman year at Pomperog High School. So this is one of the reasons we love to do career day and come back to the school where we met. Um, we both realized that we love the same stories and same books and we instantly became friends. We also worked at the same place as a server, Pomperog Woods in Southbury. Later on, we both went to Southern Connecticut State University for a little while. After high school, after college, we were roommates and Jessica read Harry Potter, just like I did. And she used to come with me to my fifth grade class every year and help me throw a Harry Potter party for my class because she loved stories and she loved books and she loved helping kids to find the passion and love for reading. So for a long time, as you can see, stories and books have connected Jessica and I. So it was kind of inevitable that we would start writing together. And the writing started brewing because Jess had worked on a poem called Ruby Begonia and the High Heeled Sneakers based on a story her grandfather had told her about strange noises that she heard in her house growing up. I thought it was an amazing poem and I read it to my fifth grade class and had them visualize the poem and they drew pictures. And later Jess um, wrote it into a picture book and she tried to have it published, but it just wasn't the right time and place for that book. So it didn't work out, but she decided to turn it into a middle grade book and asked me to co-author it. Although I was a little nervous and worried because I thought we've been friends for a long time. What if this doesn't work out? 
what if this ruins our friendship? But Jessica and I agreed that we would try to write the best story we could and we would not let our egos get in the way. So if someone wanted to delete something or change something, we would think about what's the best thing for the story, not what's the best thing for my ego. And that really helped. So once we agreed to write together, the adventure began. We fleshed out stories and characters out on my porch. We set up a collaboration using Google Docs, which has been so helpful because we could both write from wherever we are in the world as long as we have Wi-Fi. So we can write on documents at the same time. We could write on them separately, which is what we usually do. Um, and it's really been incredibly helpful. We also made sure when we knew we wanted to start writing books together that we needed to read as many other middle grade books as we could. And we also started attending writers conferences and book fairs to hear from experts and professionals because not only is it inspiring, but it's also very informative. So we highly recommend if you wanna be a writer to go to writers conferences and book fairs. There's some that cost money and there's lots of free ones throughout the state and nearby states. And of course, if you wanna be a reader, I mean, a writer, you need to do as much reading and writing as you can. So, of course, with every path you take and everything you do, sometimes at the end or later on in the middle, you think about things you do differently. So, my background in education helped me to get a better understanding of the age group that I now write for. So, I think all my experience as a teacher only helped me as a writer. Um, I could have an insight into the minds of 10 and 11 year olds, which is the age group that I write for. So all the steps I took led me to where I am. One thing I would have liked to have known is the steps for getting my work published. We didn't know all the steps and it wasn't as easy to find out all the information when Jessica and I started. And it would have been really nice to know what I needed to do, when I needed to do it, because Jess and I spent a lot of time that was wasted doing things that we did not need to do, but that someone had told us we needed to do. So I would like to go back and only do the things I need to do, use my time more wisely. Jess says she wouldn't change the path she's taken. She's content with the, how the story has played out. Success is tied up in failure. She doesn't have a problem when we don't win. And in fact, she thinks losing is an important part of the practice of anything. And that's true. When you lose, you really do learn your lesson and you figure out how to do better next time. Something that she would do differently now is to keep a check on her ego and not get up in a bunch about what she thinks someone else might be thinking about the books. This is hard because you feel very attached to your writing and Sometimes you get worried about like, what does someone else think? And you might not make all the right decisions because you're kind of worried or concerned. So I agree with Jess, that would be a good thing to make sure you don't stop going forward because you're worried about things like that. So some risks that we took. Everything you do in life, there's different risks. We didn't know if our book was going to get published, but writing it, we, is something that we did anyway. We had fun writing it. We laughed. We did so much work, but when we never knew what would happen because you don't know what will happen. So we had to just accept the process and see how the progress was going to happen. Um, the mistakes we made were stepping stones to success and taught us how to improve our project. This is true. We made mistakes and we learned from them. Um, if we didn't take the chance, then nothing would have ever happened. So if you want to be a writer, if you want to do something, it's hard, but you have to put yourself out there. And if you do, you may be able to have your work published or to have other people read it. And if you don't, no one ever is going to read it. So don't get in your own way. Um, we also had to put our work out in the world, which was scary. And we had to develop thick skin. When people read your writing, they do make judgments. I don't like this. I don't like that. I do like this. Reading and writing, you'll see, are very subjective. One person may love what you wrote and someone else may not. And when you write a manuscript and you send it to different agents and editors, they don't all love it. <laughs> Even Harry Potter was turned down multiple times. Um, collaborating as friends was a risk, but we set our egos aside and committed to writing the best story we could. Some advice that we have for writers. 
First off, write and finish your book. If you don't write and don't finish your book, then you're not going to have anything to improve, to work on, to try to get someone to pay attention to and be interested in. After you write and finish your book, you need to edit it. This means you need to go through it over and over again, at least four or five times, and fix the spelling, grammar, punctuation, take out things that aren't necessary. It does help if you have the time to put the book aside so you're not reading the words so much that they've kind of lost their meaning a little bit. If you have money and you are able to pay like someone that works at a at a college um, in an English department to help you with editing your book before you send it to an agent, that's a great idea, but you don't have to do that step, but you want it to be as clean and sparkly as you can. When you send your manuscript to an agent to ask if they will represent you, you have to send something called a query letter. There are specific formats for what the query letter needs to look like and be like. It has to include certain information. It shouldn't include certain information. And editors are sticklers for what is in a query letter. The query letter is like your way of getting them to read your writing. So you want to make sure that you follow the directions, that you do what's expected, because if you don't, they very well may throw everything in the slush pile or the garbage. Research agents who represent your genre. There are agents that like historical fictions or ones that like picture books or cookbooks. Make sure whatever your genre of writing is, you find someone that loves that genre, that represents that genre, because you want an agent that is going to go to bat for you, that's going to tell people how awesome your writing is. They have to be like your biggest cheerleader. So make sure that you only are finding people that you would want to represent you. This is a mistake a lot of authors make and they think having an agent is better than having no agent and that actually isn't true. If you have an agent who doesn't like your genre or doesn't help to promote you, that could really make things very hard for you on your path to being an author. Attend writers conferences and book fairs, which I mentioned earlier, but this gives you so much information about formats of book, books and how you submit manuscripts. You have a chance to network and talk to people in the publishing industry. And it is so inspiring when you go to a writing conference and you leave and you're, you have just spent the day learning and talking and hearing people and you feel so motivated and inspired to write. So totally recommend that. Make sure to network with other authors in your genre. Sometimes um, having um, uh, some type of connection on social media or on a blog or a website is a great way to help promote their work and your work. And you can kind of piggyback off of each other with that. Make sure to keep good notes about the key points of your story and characters. You think you will remember it all, but you most likely will not, especially if you have an agent or editor that asks you to change things and move things um, in a different order and it's very easy for some of those things to get lost and then you have to keep looking them up. We highly recommend using a style sheet where you keep track of characters and spellings of different things and what people look like and um, different words that you need to remember if they're capitalized or not in your book. So a style sheet is key. Use tools like drawing to inspire writing. When Jessica and I talk about what's going to happen next in the book, she will go off afterwards and draw and sketch. And she might do that for a day or two, and then she'll send me the pictures. And it's amazing the things we find in her artwork that weren't in our actual writing, but that we can try to incorporate into our writing. And those little nuggets are really, really helpful. And they really do add a lot to the story. So if you love to draw or you like to paint, it's a great tool to use to help inspire you. Otherwise, you could look at pictures and get yourself motivated that way to help you paint a picture with your words. Really important to have a social media platform to connect with authors and readers. You don't have to be a part of all social media platforms because there are so many and they constantly change. But you want to make sure that you have a platform that you like, that you'll keep up with, that you can connect with authors and readers and other writers. So it could be anything that you want that you think will help you connect. Also having a, a blog or a website is another way to help practice the craft of writing. Typically when we come to career day, 
kids can ask us questions and we can answer them. So we're kind of picked and chosen a couple of the questions from the past that you may want to hear the answers to. So how and why did you choose this career? Jessica says that she would say that writing and art chose her. She feels like she's a sort of creativity conductor. She writes and makes art regardless of the circumstances. And in this field, you have to be okay with subtle meanings and playful frivolity as payment. Monetary reward can be tough. So she gets a lot of happiness and excitement just from creating the art. What are the most important skills and abilities required? Jessica says, knowing the purpose of your work. Proceeding this, you must enjoy doing it, and you must be capable of giving yourself quiet, comfortable space to play with your imagination. Everything in the world will tell you this activity has no, everything in the world will tell you this activity has no value, but I'm telling you that it does. What are some related careers that you should consider? Jess says, for actual writing, it doesn't matter. The more diverse experiences you have in your life, the more enriched your writing craft will be. If you want to get into the publishing game, sometimes editors are selected to be authors, become an intern or assistant to a publisher in New York. This will keep you close to the book buzz and win you some friends. So you could have any job, but it is if you want to go get a job in the publishing industry, try it out. A lot of times those people get publishing contracts later on down the road. Now I'll answer a few questions from my point of view. So what education requirements are needed for your career? None. There's no specific requirements that you that are needed to be an author. Certainly you could take writing classes and get a degree in writing. It will only make you stronger with grammar, spelling, proofreading, understanding style, mood, tone, all of these things. But it's fine not to get a degree as well. Jessica and I do not have degrees in writing and you don't even need to have a college degree. You can have one, but it's not necessary. Everybody always wants to know how much money does this career provide at the entry level and after 10 years. When I signed my publishing contract, people were saying to me, oh my goodness, are you going to quit your job as a teacher? Um, no, it's not like that <laughs> for most people. So authors typically do not go into it for the money. If you are going to, to be an author because you want to make a lot of money, then you need to maybe go and get paid to write articles and websites uh, articles and things like that. We would love to make money and live off our writing. And there are some authors who can do that, like Rick Riordan or Mary uh, Pope Osborne or John Grisham, J.K. Rowling. There are people that do, but they are the big, big names in, in the field of writing. Most people have to work two jobs. Out of my 15,000 books that I have at my school library, there's only a handful of those authors that don't have two jobs if they're still living. Um, so you might make an advance, most authors do when you sign a publishing contract, which is pretty small amount when you're a new author, but you have to pay back that money. It's kind of like a loan and you pay it back a little bit at a time. So if you sign your publishing contract and they give you the advance, once your book is on sale, Every book that sells, you're paying them back 60 cents of a hardcover book until you pay back all the money. So they might make $15 on a hardcover. You pay them back out of your debt to them 60 cents. Once you pay back your whole advance, then you can start making money. And then each book that sells, you'll make about 60 cents a book. It could vary slightly from there, but that's about what the standard publishing contract is. So it could take a really long time to make money. Certainly, the more books you can write, the more money you can make because you'll be making money off of those books, but it kind of depends on your second job and how much time you have to spend doing things with that. So making a mystery and making mysteries is a wild ride. Jessica and I have had a blast writing together. We still are writing together. If you want to find out more, you can go to Google and type in Faraday's blog and or, or you can type in the secret files of Faraday Morrow and you'll come to our page where we have a lot of different information about um, the seeds of a book and writing, growing a book garden. So what to do once you have your writing and you can see that there's all different topics. 
when you're looking for an agent and an editor, your book rights. So I would highly recommend checking that out if you are interested in being a writer and you want to see some of the articles we've written about some of the different steps. We also have fairdaysfiles.com, which is our website. We answer questions from readers and other writers all the time. Or you can connect with us on any other type of social media that we have, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, our blog. We are currently working on Faraday Morrow and the Masters Emporium to be out December 2021. And we have other information for writers that if you have access to the slideshow, you can see our ingredients for a good mystery. You could watch our book trailers. You can see um, our, our advice about write what you know. These are things that most people hear that, but they sometimes forget that if you want to write, don't make it complicated. Write about things you know about and incorporate them into your story. We um, also highly recommend revising, revising, revising. Editing and revising is what makes your work sparkle. We also love to do that with Google Docs. And here's some of Jessica's illustrations because, as I mentioned earlier, illustrations help Jess to get creative and help her envision the story. So there are lots of tips for being a writer. You hopefully have gotten answers to a lot of your questions, but if you haven't, please feel free to contact Jessica and I by emailing us through our website, and we will be happy to write you back with any information we can help you with. And we are wishing you the best of luck as you try to figure out what you'd like to do with your time after high school. And we hope we can come back to Career Day again next year and visit PHS again. Good luck.